Welcome back to Football Daily People and in this week's XI we're looking at a squad of players who ruined the Champions League. P.S. This wasn't my script. Goalkeeper Jens Lehmann Mad Jens Lehmann was Arsenal's last great keeper. A loud-mouthed, abrasive manic between the sticks, whose high standards and organisational skills helped Arsenal concede just 128 goals in 152 games over his first four years at the club. But sadly, he was to be the architect of the club's darkest day at the 2006 Champions League final. The German had been a giant in the competition, helping Arsenal keep 10 clean sheets in a row and setting a record for the most minutes without conceding in the competition, with 853. But in the final, with Arsenal and Barcelona deadlocked at 0-0, Samuel Eto'o was sent through on goal, only for Lehmann to upend him and earn a red card. The Gunners were down to 10 men after only 18 minutes. They would eventually lose 2-1, with replacement Manuel Almunia conceding as many goals in his 72 minutes on the field as Arsenal had in their other 12 games in the tournament that season. Lehmann's mistake kick-started a new era of dominance for Barcelona and meant that Arsene Wenger persevered in North London for more than a decade afterwards, haunted by what could have been. Defender Bartosz Berezinski There's no reason for you to have heard of Polish defender Bartosz Berezinski. The fullback currently turns out for Sampdoria, but first found success in his homeland, winning five Polish titles during his time with Lech Poznan and Liga Warsaw. However, Berezinski's most memorable contribution to club football came in 2014. Having been sent off in Liga's final Europa League game the previous year, the defender was banned for three European games the following season. After sitting out four fixtures, he made his comeback in a 2-0 victory over Celtic in the third Champions League qualifying round, as Liga coasted to a 6-1 win on aggregate. But the tie was to turn sour. Berezinski had been left off the squad list for two of Liga's games, meaning those did not count towards his ban, and he had played against Celtic illegally. UEFA overturned the result, handing Celtic an automatic 3-0 win, which made the aggregate score 4-4 and put the Glaswegian outfit through on away goals. Ouch. Defender Sergio Ramos We're sure Real Madrid fans will disagree with us, or Pato, but for neutrals, Sergio Ramos has been responsible for some of the Champions League's greatest disappointments. A three-time winner of the competition, Ramos has scored twice in the final, the same as Leo Messi. And both times, Ramos denied Atletico Madrid a fairy tale triumph. In 2014, Simeone's side were 1 0 up in the 93rd minute, when the Spaniard headed home from a corner, preventing the underdogs from completing a league and Champions League double. Two years later, he scored Real's only goal in a 1 1 draw, before converting a penalty in the shootout to down the Rocky Blancos again. But it's not only Atleti who have suffered. In the 2017 decider, in the 84th minute, and with Real already leading Juventus 3 1, Ramos dived to the floor holding his foot after receiving a gentle push from Juan Cuadrado. His play acting sentenced the Colombian to just the third red card in a UCL final, after Lehman and Didier Drogba. Defender Amado Carboni A member of the Valencia side which won two Spanish titles in the early 2000s, Amado Carboni was a left back who also turned out for the Italian national team, as well as Parma and Roma. A model professional, the Italian's exceptional fitness helped him play for Los Chi until he was 41, and after retiring, he became the club's director of football. But Carboni was also responsible for Valencian's heartbreak in 2001. The side had reached their second Champions League final in a row, and after a 3-0 demolition at the hands of Real Madrid the previous year, they faced Bayern Munich. Mendieta, the team's star, gave them an early lead from the penalty spot, and the Bavarians missed a spot kick of their own, making it look like it might be the Spaniards' year at last. But in the second half, while challenging for a header, Carboni handled the ball, giving away another penalty. This time, Stefan Effenberg scored, and it remained 1-1 for the rest of normal and extra time, taking the match to a shootout, in which Carboni missed his effort, with Kahn tipping it onto the bar. Bayern won their fourth title. Valencia are still waiting. Midfielder Cristiano Ronaldo The all-time top scorer in the Champions League, Cristiano Ronaldo has made a habit of crushing dreams in his relentless march into the history books. The Portuguese has lifted the trophy four times with two different clubs and has scored four goals in finals, behind only Real legends Puskats and De Stefano. Two of those came in 2017, when CR7 helped his side batter Juventus 4-1 and in the process denies Gianluigi Buffon his last chance at lifting the one trophy that has eluded him. 
it was the iconic stopper's third final and third loss. But quite frankly, Real were lucky to have reached the match at all. During the quarter-final against Bayern Munich, Real went down 2-1 in normal time to send the match to an extra period. Only for Ronaldo to complete a hat-trick with Los Blancos eventually running out 6-3 aggregate winners. But two of Ronaldo's goals were clearly offside, making it hard to give them full credit for becoming the first team in the Champions League era to win back-to-back -back titles. No matter what happens in domestic football, Real and Ronaldo managed to find their luck just when they need it in Europe. Midfielder Sergio Busquets A remarkably gifted player and arguably the best player in the world according to Patrick Van Straten, Sergio Busquets has nonetheless earned critics during his career for his tendency to go down easily. And while we associate those kind of dark arts with experience, the Spaniard excelled as a 21-year-old, as his predecessor at Barcelona, Thiago Motta, can attest. The two faced each other in the UCL semi in 2010, with Motta then at Inter. And as the Italian broke through the midfield, he held out an arm to keep Busquets at bay. However, the lanky Catalan saw an opportunity and collapsed, clutching his face. Motta was dismissed, but not before the TV cameras caught Busquets peeking from behind his hands to see whether the referee was looking. And two years later, Busquets got the better of the other Milan side. This time it was a quarter-final and the score was 1-1 when Busquets went down in the box at a Barcelona corner. Alessandro Nesta admittedly was holding his shirt, but Nesta was fouled by Puyol himself, and technically there was no reason to give the pen, as the corner hadn't even been taken yet, so the ball wasn't in play. Nonetheless, the referee awarded the spot kick, and Messi scored to send Guardiola's team through. They went on to win the Champions League that year, but for many football fans, they have never forgiven Busquets. Midfielder Jean-Jacques Zidelli. It may have given us some of football's most glittering and star-studded nights, but the Champions League has also had its share of tawdry moments. In its very first season, back in 1993, the competition saw its first and only French winner, with a Marseille team featuring Marcel Desailly and Didier Deschamps beating Capello's Milan 1-0 in the final. Playing centre-back for the Olympians in that game was Jean-Jacques Zidelli, a utility man enjoying his debut campaign with the club, as they romped to a league and UCL double. But Idelli's utility went further than the pitch. At the year's end, Jacques Glassman, a defender at Ligue 1 rivals Valenciennes, reported that Idelli had approached him and two teammates, offering bribes to give Marseille an easy ride when the two sides met, so they could wrap up the championship and be well rested for the forthcoming European crunch match with the Rossoneri. It turned out Idelli was acting on behalf of the Marseille board, and he was banned for a year, as well as serving two weeks in prison, while club president Bernard Tappy got two years in jail. On was stripped of their domestic title, but UEFA, not wanting to devalue their shiny new tournament, chose to turn a blind eye and let them keep their medals. Ideli eventually returned to action in Switzerland. Midfielder, Luis Garcia. You don't think of Jose Mourinho as a force for progress in football, but back in 2005, the Portuguese became an unlikely advocate for goal line technology. The coach was in his first season with Chelsea and bidding for back-to-back -back Champions League titles, with Chelsea facing Liverpool in the competition semis. The first leg ended 0-0 at Stamford Bridge, and just four minutes into the second game, Luis Garcia hooked an effort goalwards after a penalty box scramble. William Gallas booted it away from under the crossbar, but the referee awarded the goal, which would end up being the only one of the tie, and send Liverpool to Istanbul for the final. However, video replay revealed that the ball had not crossed the line, with Mourinho labelling it a ghost goal and claiming the linesman scored. It was the first of many European disappointments for the special one in London, but Liverpool rejoiced as they made their first final in 20 years, going on to mount one of the sport's greatest ever comebacks to defeat AC Milan. Midfielder Mario Goetze Back in 2013, the Bundesliga was much tighter than it is now. Bayern had won just two of the previous six titles, while Borussia Dortmund were back-to-back -back champions, with their attack orchestrated by then 20-year-old star Mario Goetze. The wonder kid had contributed to a goal every 133 minutes over the two previous campaigns, had been named the best young prospect in Europe, and was linked with every big club for a fee over £30 million, a massive sum at that time. Both Bayern and Dortmund were in the Champions League semi-finals, and on the day before BVB faced Real Madrid in the first leg in Germany, it was announced that Goetze would switch to the Allianz in the summer for his release clause of £32 million, the most ever paid for a German at that point. 
With the Munich outfit having wrapped up the bully just days earlier, it signified the shift of power back to Bavaria. And Bayern went on to win the treble, beating BVB in the UCL final. Dortmund gradually declined under Klopp, robbing the European stage of one of its most exciting and promising young sides. Meanwhile, Goetze sat on the Bayern bench. Forward, Diego Costa. Loved and hated in equal measure, Diego Costa was little known before 2013, thanks to his role as understudy to Radamel Falcao at Atletico Madrid. But when the Colombian left for Monaco, Costa blossomed into one of Europe's most complete forwards, scoring 27 goals in the league, more than he'd managed in the three previous campaigns put together. But hamstring injuries dogged the target man, and in the final game of the season against Barcelona, he went off after just 16 minutes, leaving Atleti to wrap up the title with a gutsy draw. With the Champions League final against Real Madrid just a week away, Atletico sent Costa to Belgrade for an experimental treatment involving liquid extract from a horse's placenta. How lovely. Costa started the final, but surprisingly enough, Seabiscuit's plasma failed to heal his torn muscle, and again he left the field after nine minutes. A weakened Atleti almost beat Real regardless, but in extra time, the loss of their star forward told, and they eventually crumbled, losing 4-1. Costa left for Chelsea that summer. Forward, Luis Adriano. With 21 goals in the Champions League, Luis Adriano ranks among the 50 top scorers in the competition's history, on the same number as Steven Gerrard. But at least one of the Brazilian strikes should never have counted. While at Shakhtar in 2012, Adriano was leading the line in a group stage tie with Danish Minos Norseland, when one of the Danes went down injured. After the team doctor had checked him out, the ref restarted the game with a drop ball, and Willian, now of Chelsea, knocked it upfield. But rather than let the opposition regain possession like normal, Adriano ran onto the so-called pass, took it round the disbelieving keeper, and scored, to erase Norseland's 1-0 lead. Amid protests, Shakhtar considered letting their opponents dribble through and score from kickoff, but in the end carried on as normal, eventually winning 5-2, with Adriano completing his hat-trick. However, he didn't escape scot-free, as UEFA handed him a one-match ban and his own club released a statement condemning his actions. Still scored a hatty though. So I hope you guys liked that video. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed that, why not check out the video on screen right now? I'm sure it is great. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.